Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us today for our presentation on whole grains. My name is Michelle Bisbee, and I will go, be going through this presentation with you, um, and my email will be provided at the end in case you have any questions that you think of afterwards, but feel free to put questions um, in the chat throughout the presentation. So let's get started. Grains are required to be offered at each meal service as described by the National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program meal patterns. Ounce equivalent standards are used to, de to designate the contribution a given serving size makes towards the grain component. Therefore, grain products served must be credited based on ounce equivalent standards. An ounce equivalent is the amount of grain product that is considered equal to or contains one ounce creditable towards the grain component. So how do we know, how do we figure out how these all credit? A wonderful, easy to use resource is the Exhibit A grains chart. This useful chart can be found here at this link. Um, and if you are on our page, it's under the menu planning dropdown. There are nine different groups explained on this chart. Next, we'll take a look at how each group credits individually. So the first group that is listed is group A. These are things like breadsticks, crackers, savory items that are fairly dried out. Items in this group only require 0.8 ounces to credit as a one ounce equivalent. This is because they are considered to be dried items. There's not as much moisture, so they're not going to weigh as much. The second group, which is probably the most common you'll see, is group B. Any item in this group credits ounce for ounce. So one ounce of an item is a one ounce equivalent. This is your bagels, your breads, your hot dog buns, a burger buns, biscuits, pizza crust, um, soft pretzels, rolls, things like that, taco shells and tortilla chips. These are the most commonly used products in child nutrition programs. The next group is group C. This includes your cornbread, corn muffins, croissants, pancakes, pie crusts, um, and waffles. And they can also include cookies as well. Uh, because there are other ingredients that go into this group, you need 1.2 ounces to equal a one ounce equivalent grain. Next is group D. Like the group before, items in this group have a lot of other ingredients mixed into them. Therefore, they have determined that items in this group need to weigh two ounces to become an, a one ounce equivalent. Um, this includes your donuts, cereal bars, muffins, um, any sweet rolls without frosting or toaster pastries without frosting. Group E is next. These are your cereal bars, breakfast bars, um, or granola bars that include dried nuts, uh, sorry, nuts, dried fruit, or chocolate pieces. Um, some cookies, some donuts, if they are yeast raised or frosted or glazed. Uh, your French toast, um, any sweet rolls or toasted pastries that are frosted. Because there is a, more items even added to these, you need 2.4 ounces to equal a one ounce equivalent grain. Items in group F uh, contain a lot less creditable grain than the others. These are cakes and coffee cakes. You don't see them quite as often, but they are a nice occasional treat for the kids. Um, and to get a one ounce equivalent grain, you need 2.9 ounces per serving. And then in group G, again, you know, uh, sweets, these are what we would consider grain-based desserts. Um, you have brownies and cakes. Um, once again, because there's a lot more, you know, ingredients that go into these and especially more sugar, you need a 4.4 ounce serving for it to credit for a one ounce equivalent grain. 
Group H um, are items that can be measured either in their cooked form or dry form. So for a one ounce equivalent in this group, you would either need a one ounce dry grain or a half a cup cooked product. This includes your cereal grains like barley and quinoa, um, your cooked breakfast cereals like oatmeal, cream of wheat, things like that. Um, you got your pastas in there, ravioli and rice. And then finally is group I. This is your ready to eat breakfast cereals. This category contains a few different scenarios because of the wide variety of different types of cereal. For instance, um, a one ounce equivalent of a flake or a round style cereal is either one cup or one ounce. Um, for a puffed cereal, this is your Rice Krispies, things like that. You need uh, 1.25 cups for a one ounce equivalent, or you could just once again weigh out an ounce. Um, and then for granolas and things like that, a quarter of a cup will give you a one ounce equivalent. So there's a few different scenarios to look at with this category. So the most simple way to determine how a grain credits is by using a scale. If you have that exhibit A grains chart, you know what you have for a grain. You can determine how it credits by just putting the item on a scale. For example, if you're making muffins from scratch, all you need to do is weigh it after it is baked to determine how it credits. A muffin that weighs two ounces will credit for a one ounce equivalent grain. Another useful tool when crediting grains um, is actually using dishers, spoodles, or measuring cups. This method works well for the items in group H that we spoke about that you can measure by weight dry or by volume once they've been cooked. Um, the, the spoodles and the dishers are probably the most useful tool because they come in specific standard sizes. The gray handled number eight disher is a half cup. So that way you know with each scoop exactly how much you're serving. So what whole grain rich means for homemade items or scratch made items. When you're making items from scratch, you can use a combination of whole grain flour and enriched flour if you choose. You just need to be sure that your recipe has at least 51% of the flour being a whole grain. So whole grain rich when it comes to prepackaged items. Sometimes reading labels can be tricky. If you're looking at just the front, sometimes the wording is a little bit misleading. So you always wanna look at the ingredients list. The ingredients list on a food label are always listed from greatest to least amount. So the label must have whole corn or water with whole following as the first ingredient to be considered whole grain rich. Enriched grains can be in the ingredients, but it must be listed after a whole grain. So grains that meet the whole grain requirement include whole wheat flour, brown rice, wild rice, oatmeal, corn, quinoa, barley, Nixtamalized corn, which is corn that has been treated with lime, such as hominy, corn masa, or masa harina. None of these items can have the word enriched in front of them. That is the key when looking for whole grains. There are some other ones that can be considered whole grains, but they're not really prevalent in school food service programs. So if you come across one that you want to use, feel free to shoot us an email or check out the food buying guide just to be sure that it credits beforehand. So grain requirements for the National School Lunch Program and the School Breakfast Program. The state of Maine strongly encourages that all grains that are served be whole grain rich. USDA, however, currently requires that 80% of the weekly grains offered must be whole grain rich. If you have any questions in regard to the 80% requirement, please feel free to email me at any time. So at this time, we will take any questions that anyone has. All right, if anybody thinks of any questions, it doesn't appear that we have any in the chat at this time. Um, 
please feel free to email me. Um, my email address is on the screen right there. It's michelle.bisbee at maine.gov. Thank you very much for joining me today, and I look forward to helping you out if you need it. <laughs>